warm good morning to all of you. Professor Dr. G.S. Vajpayee, Vice Chancellor, National Law University, Delhi. In his address, he has given out everything which I need to know and inspired and motivated everyone. And accolades have come to this place so repeatedly. Congratulations to him, members of the faculty, members of the staff, and dear students for making your university proud. <laughs> Professor Dr. V.K. Ahuja, Director, Indian Law Institute. As a young lawyer from Rajasthan, I was so enamored of Indian Law Institute that I became its member and attended when the Indian Law Institute had Silver Jubilee celebration. Let me give a small anecdote. There was a suave lady sitting next to me and we were having a serious conference on Silver Jubilee celebration. The lady sought pen from me. I said, why do you come to such a serious program without a pen? I had the good fortune to appear before the lady in Supreme Court. She became a Supreme Court judge. <laughs> So moral of the story is, if you seek pen from a good person, you rise. <laughs> His final strength my, of my legal profession had been their annual law survey. Remarkably thought-provoking. You will not have to read Keshwan and Bharti. No, you can read Indian Law Institute Annual Journal of Law. Their towers, I hope you still, you still do? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. A great asset. You can monetize time, yet be fully updated about precedent law emanating from the Indian Supreme Court that, for each case, gets very voluminous. So, so they come handy. Srimati Himani Pandey handles, as an IS officer, very important issues in the Ministry, Government of India, which is galloping to secure for us Vixit Bharat at 2047. And IPR is one of her forte, also her brief. We have boys and girls, distinguished people in the audience. Jayashri Watal, visiting professor and an IS officer of 1978 batch. Her husband is also known, Mr. Watal. Dr. Pushpinder Rai, another IS officer, senior to Jai Sri by one year, 1977 batch, and former director of World Intellectual Property Organization, international IP advisor, which means he is in the right company. <laughs> Where he has reached, many of you will certainly reach and reach higher. I have no doubt about it. Members of the faculty are very distinguished one and dear friends. Let me first tell you about me a little bit which you do not know. I started my career in 1979, the year I was married. The year I was married is irrelevant because when you get into legal profession, you have to keep company of the jealous mistress. <laughs> I pampered and kept a good company of the jealous mistress for four decades. And three decades and above being a senior advocate. But it was a good fortune on 20th of July 2019, the day Neil Armstrong landed on the moon 50 years ago in 2019, that I was appointed by a warrant. Warrant for a lawyer, you can understand, is a draconian word. Warrant signed by the then President Ramnath Kovind appointing me as Governor of State of West Bengal. Travesty of justice was complete for me. Jealous mistress was gone because it was my wife's birthday also, 20th of July. It is with great optimism and confidence that I address you today. Most of it has been generated in last few minutes I have spent on the campus and having looked at your vibrant faces. 
let me tell you those at the back benches you are not back benchers you are you just happen to be sitting on the back bench and therefore my greetings and salutations to you you are as important as those who are on in the front bench if not more <laughs> education is undoubtedly the most impactful mechanism of social upliftment and economic development it brings equality and neutralizes societal inequities ensuring benefits of growth reach even the most marginalized these days education defines where you would be earlier it used to be what is known as privileged pedigree or patronage or being above law not any longer a big change has come and youth of the country must be enthused that there is in place an ecosystem now where you can fully unleash your energy exploit your talent and potential realize your dreams and aspirations and thereby contribute in the marathon march of which you are most important stakeholder for vikshit bharat 2047 boys and girls you are indeed fortunate you are recipients of quality education at this institution and what an institution second rank in the low university category in the nirf ranking for the seventh consecutive year i recall a great philosopher of pre socrates era heraclitus he famously said the only constant in life is the change and he further said a sa the same man cannot enter the same river twice because neither the man is the same nor the river is the same you kept the change you still maintained your position congratulations vice chancellor vajpayee and your team i am further delighted because of this orientation program for two reasons one reflected already by the learned vice chancellor secondly at a global benchmark you are part of i think 10 or 11 such programs which means you are ahead of others ahead of times to take india ahead of other nations this orientation program for the joint masters and llm in intellectual property law and management a collaboration between nu and lu delhi and world intellectual property organization congratulations for this convergence it's wholesome con convergence that will bring about geometric dividends congratulations to all the student participants in this program and i'm confident you will all will make most of the opportunity intellectual property law and management are pivotal to innovation economic growth and the protection of creative endeavors as well as safeguarding our ancient knowledge and research the latter one is more important in our globalized era ip has become a cornerstone of international trade for india that is home to one sixth of humanity a strong ip protection is crucial for attracting foreign investment and fostering technology transfer congratulations to the additional secretary for doing much in this direction and yielding good results india has made young boys and girls significant strides in strengthening its ip regime our legislative framework i am in some capacity associated with it has been progressively aligned with international standards ensuring robust protection we have carefully crafted a regime that complies with obligations in the world trade organization's agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights for short and eginess trips and other bilateral and regional agreements india has also been proactive in leveraging technology to enhance ip administration implement implementing online filing and processing system reducing delays and improving transparency 
As a matter of fact, we can take pride that this is a system fully digitized, transparent and accountable and has reached a high global benchmark. In today's knowledge-based economy, the value of intangible assets often surpasses that of tangible assets. Look at our civilizational ethos of 5,000 years. Knowledge and wisdom are in our repository. No nation can take pride in a distant second if there is one when it comes to evolution of what knowledge we have. India with its rich tradition of creativity and innovation stands to gain enormously from a robust IP ecosystem. Our country is often referred to, and rightly so, and for very worthy premise, a gold mine of intellectual property due to its rich cultural and historical heritage. The Vedas, let me digress for a moment. As Vice President, I also happen to be Chairman Rajya Sabha. I found that a lot many people talk about Vedas without once having seen them in physical form. I therefore thought it in fitness of things to request the Education Minister to make in physical form Vedas to every member of Parliament. I beseech all of you to help by your bedside the Vedas in physical form. And trust me, you will find solution to everything and you will get unreached day by day. Friends, the Vedas and ancient scriptures forming the foundation of Indian philosophy, spirituality and sciences are prime examples of this intellectual treasure. These texts, texts in Vedas and many more others also encompass a vast array of concepts ranging from mathematics and astronomy to medicine and architecture offering insights is still relevant today. Arya but Vishwakarma, look at the kind of treasure we have. That is our intellectual property. That is the intellectual property we need to monetize, preserve, sustain and disseminate. It will create wealth for us. India's traditional practices such as Ayurveda and Yoga have gained global recognition, demonstrating the potential for commercialization of these ancient ideas. Imagine a country like ours where Ayurveda is there. We didn't have Ayush ministry. It was only in the last 10 years we had one. And no one globally knew what Yoga is till the Indian Prime Minister went to United Nations, made a clarion call. Widest uh, acceptability was there by largest number of nations, and we have June 21 now all over the globe. Yoga Day. Even India's diverse folklore, go to any part. I had the good fortune to be chairman of the Eastern Zone Cultural Center by virtue of being governor of the state of West Bengal, covering about 10 states on the eastern part of the country never imagined, could never dream, the kind of richness was there in art, folk, paintings, music, instrumentation. So these forms, cultural expressions can potentially contribute to its intellectual property landscape. You can do it. You just have to look around. Grab the opportunity, monetize it. You'll be doing for yourself, for the nation, and also for the world and these foster creativity and originality, and they emanate from land of birth. India's thriving innovation ecosystem has helped the country buck the global trend of diminished IP activity and show rises in patents, trademarks, designs, and geographical indicators. A concept too dear to us. Go to any district of the country, you will find geographical indicators. Go to any part of Bharat, you'll find cuisine which is so specific, which can get global. You can do it. Each one of you has the potential by your training, particularly in IP, intellectual property aspects. You can do it. The Indian IP office reported a 24.6% annual increase in patent filings in financial year 2023, showcasing the country's rising innovation trajectory. 
have checked for your benefit, the trajectory is incremental. IP rights in incentivize innovation. As a matter of fact, they spur innovation. They trigger innovation. They catalyze innovation by enabling creators to benefit from their work. The success of the Indian generics in the global market worth over 20 billion US dollars in exports annually stems from a balanced IP approach, thanks to the affirm affirmative governance in the IP regime mechanism by the government of India. Young boys and girls, moreover, IP rights have been crucial in protecting traditional knowledge. By traditional knowledge, I mean a knowledge that has evolved over centuries. Some forms of knowledge which concern our health, our hygiene, has come in the shape of kivdantis. By word of mouth, passed from one nani to another nani, from one dadi to another dadi, this came quite to the advantage of the nation even during COVID also. You have to secure it so that it remains ours, not for our benefit alone, but for the benefit of the world at large. IP rights have been crucial in protecting traditional knowledge, and we have taken big lead in this. A structured lead, a lead that was needed and fortunately is in place. And that is the traditional knowledge digital library has successfully prevented several attempts at biopiracy, safeguarding India's rich heritage of traditional medicine. But challenge in this direction is rising by the day. We have to be alert 24 into 7. In the digital era, India faces unique IP challenges along with the world, particularly in software and digital content. This is the time when there should be wholesome convergence of all stakeholders, and that would go a long way in strengthening the preservation and protection of our IP rights. They are valuable to us. There is no reason why India should not be number one in intellectual property, because we are. We have to discover, then we have to make it subject to the regime, to take its ownership, then fructify its dissemination, create Indian wealth for the nation and welfare of the world. Initiatives like the National IPR Policy 2016, and this happened for the first time, aim to strengthen the IP ecosystem, underlining its importance in driving innovation and economic growth in the Indian context. Our economy, boys and girls, is on the rise as never before. The rise is unstoppable. We are already fifth largest global economy, ahead of our colonial rulers, UK and France, to name countries. Matter of a year or two, Japan, Germany, we would have overtaken. In that, this becomes all the more relevant, that intellectual property regime is absolutely up to the mark to sustain our economic growth and rise. And the mechanism, the policy aims at socio-economic development for a creative India, innovative India. Rasnathamak Bharat, Abhinav Bharat, underlying this in the foundation is intellectual property regime. India's exponential economic rise and ambitious targets would gather momentum with robust IP protection that is gaining ground, but you have to be its warriors. You have to be warriors with a knowledge different than other parts of the world. And you who have in place a system here, this compass, there is faculty that you can do it. These boys and girls will be instrumental in manifold ways, one being foreign investment attraction, encouragement of technology transfer, and positioning controversy as innovation hub. It is not without purpose that global institutions that were trying to pull strings with us and give advice. I know it as a person because in 1989 I was a member of parliament. I was union minister in 1990. I know then what happened, IMF, World Bank, 
our foreign exchange permitting gold being transferred in physical form to two banks in Switzerland to sustain our fiscal credibility. But you can do it now. As future experts in this field, you will play a crucial role in shaping policies and promote innovation and protect intellectual property rights. I would strongly urge young minds, don't fear failure. Fearing failure is working against your mind, against your mindset. Failure is natural. Chandrayaan 3 would not have been a success but for the great effort made by Chandrayaan 2. History shows it all throughout. So if you have a brilliant idea in IPR, execute it. Don't allow it to be parked in your mind. Friends, you are also facing another challenge equivalent to another industrial revolution. Disruptive technologies such as 6G, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, machine learning, blockchain, hold the potential to revolutionize every aspect of our lives. These are challenges, but also opportunities. India has rich human resource. Our DNA is very, very strong. We, must, we need to monetize it. And these disruptive technologies pose a different kind of challenge to IP protection. You have to come up to the arms. Your armory must be strengthened on that count. Enforcement of IP rights continues to be a major concern in some areas because some of us are very genius. However protective form you may create, they know how to pierce it. You have to meet the challenge. We have piracy, counterfeiting, and most importantly, inadequate awareness posing significant hurdles. People use pirated material, use counterfeited objects because they are not aware of the dangers they are playing with. So awareness has also to be another aspect of it. Let me remind you the wisdom from our ancient Veda, the Rig Veda, let noble thoughts, I'm quoting, let noble thoughts come to us from every side, and quote. Something similar was said by Bismarck, the German gentleman. Much later, let the winds of change blow from every direction. This is there in our Rig Veda thousands of years ago. Look at the form of intellectual property we have not been able to monetize. People often quote Bismarck, whereas we should be quoting the most authentic source. This verse encapsulates the essence of intellectual property, the free flow of ideas and knowledge for the betterment of society. Remember the future of Bharat lies in your capable hands. You are the architects of Vikshit Bharat, 2047. Your actions, decisions, and innovations will shape it. Friends, a few months back, I had the occasion out of pain to reflect to young minds for your welfare. Now I find soothing that extravaganza of coaching centers advertisements all over the newspaper, page one, page two, page three, putting boys and girls who made it, and same faces being used by multiple organizations. Advertisement, look at the extravaganza, the cost, every penny of that advertisement has come from those young boys and girls who are in pursuit of securing a future for themselves. Time has come. Let us be out of the silo of seductive civil service jobs. No longer. Why should we be in that silo? We know the opportunities are limited. We have to look away and find there are enormous vistas of opportunities, far more lucrative, that enable you to contribute massively. And this can happen in disruptive technologies, it can happen in space, it can happen in the ocean blue economy. You just have to look around and you'll find it was rightly been said by the International Monetary Fund, India is a favorite destination of investment and opportunity. Well, we are already here. We need to 
grab, grab them. I call upon the youth, the most vital stakeholders in sustaining growth and nurturing democratic values to optimally contribute ever keeping nation first above all. Under no situation we can relegate nation first concept to the second category. Here I seek your assistance and I beseech you. Our youth must equally rebuff and neutralize forces that keep partisan or self-interest about that of the, our nation. We cannot allow it. It happens, it is at the cost of our rights. You are law students, I will leave two thoughts with you. One, scratch your brains and find out. Jurisdiction of institution is defined by the Indian Constitution, be it legislature, be it executive, be it judiciary. Jurisdiction, of course, is decided. Look around the globe, look the Supreme Court in the US, the highest court in the UK or other formats. Has there been so much of cognizance even once? Has a remedy been created beyond what is provided in the Constitution? Constitution provides original jurisdiction, appellate jurisdiction. It provides, it provides review also. But we have curative. If you do not focus on these nuances, I wonder who shall do it, do it. Think about it. I got extremely worried when a person holding constitutional position just last week declared in a well-publicized media, I would say, campaign, decision Supreme Court to so motto invoke jurisdiction to give wings to a narrative aimed at destroying our economy. You have to think about it. Right papers. I conclude, boys and girls, with two aspects. One, I will request the Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, and the Faculty to spare time so that I can receive each one of you in a batches of around 70 as my guest at Indian Parliament, so that you happen to see it yourself, where law is made, how things happen. And going by your present strength, 10 batches should be good enough, am I right? I'll spend time with each of the batches. Number two, I'm also president of Indian Council of World Affairs, an organization that keeps in touch with global trends. An MOU will be signed between Indian Council of World Affairs and this prestigious university, National Law University, Delhi. May you be ever blessed to be in service of the nation, to be significant parts of the Marathon March for Vixit Bharat 2047, of which you are the most important vital stakeholders. Thank you so much.